Okay, this is a follow-up video to my first video on the WT588D sound chip. Uh, this one is to put it into three-line mode so you can then trigger sounds from your Arduino rather than a switch or a button. Um, you can do it with software um, and you can have access to hundreds of sounds or sound files that are on um, your WT588D. Um, so I have a speaker here. I'm going to move a little bit closer to the microphone so you can hear it. But um, currently it's set up, and when I push the reset button, it's going to say ready. And then um, just for the wiring, I'll show you a wiring diagram in a little bit. But um, essentially I have three ports, um, five, six, and seven, that are connected to P1, 2, and 3 on the uh, WT588D soundboard. I also have a ground and a VCC, and then I also have a busy signal. So the busy line goes back to the Arduino to tell the Arduino if sound is being played so it doesn't play another sound file until that one, that one finishes. Um, the speaker is connected, and it also has a reset pin, which I actually don't use, but um, you could reset the soundboard if needed uh, from the Arduino. Um, so that's there. Um, what else? I think that's it. Oh, I do have a switch. Uh, my switch is just a bare wire. Um, port 2 is set up as an input pull-up, so it has an internal pull-up resistor, which so the value is currently a 1. And then when I ground it, which I'm going to plug it into the ground port here, um, it will act like a button click. And then it, it actually counts. So we'll leave this in so you can hear it count. So it counts from 0 to 10, and when it gets to 8, it says warning, approaching maximum range. Um, so that's built in. Anytime it gets to the number 8, it will and play that sound file. It plays two sound files. It plays the 8 number, and then it also plays the warning uh, wave file. So I'm going to show you how to set that up um, and go through kind of the process. The first thing is I want to go through the wiring diagram with you. So let me show you that. Um, first, I want to give uh, kind of a shout out to uh, these are where I found my information. The first is on this forum. Um, and there's some guys that have created um, some great things. I'll put a link to this. They actually created the... Uh, um, the library that's used for this. So that's fantastic that somebody had put that together. And then this gentleman, um, I, think it's, I think it's a gentleman, I'm not sure. Um, they, they just go by this name here. So uh, they've actually created um, a talking clock, uh, which is fantastic for visually impaired. He also um, has created a few <clears throat> other devices that can use um, the talking aspect uh, to give the values that are displayed. So here he has a real-time clock with a button and I think a GPS unit on here as well uh, wired to the sound module. So when the button is pressed it will actually tell what the time is on the clock for visually impaired folks. So this is, uh, this is actually a really cool project. I got a lot of my information from from this. Um, it's spelled out. The documentation is great. It shows kind of the wiring diagram in the push button mode. And then it also has a wiring diagram for the three wire mode, which is what I used right here. So if you look, P1, 2, and 3 are plugged into 7, 6, and 5. And then 4 is connected to the busy pins, so that way you can get feedback from the, uh, the sound chip to let it know that it's still playing the sound file. You have a reset pin if you need to reset your sound chip. And then you also have port 2 here connected to a switch, and the other side is connected to ground. So again, I just used a wire and then touched it to the ground port um, if I wanted to simulate a button press. 
the real time clock and this I did not have so uh, because I wasn't making that circuit this is just a proof of concept uh, so if you wanted to put a soundboard in it on any project um, like a lightsaber you can then hook this up to let's say your accelerometer and then when your accelerometer feels a change then you can have it send a signal to play a swing sound or you can randomize which swing sound you want to play or if you see a sudden change in the accelerometer it would play a clash sound um, so that's kind of how and you can trigger and you can call those sound files however you want um, in the software and um, he has a github um, site with all of the talking clock files really the only folder you need is this master library folder and even in there you don't need these saber sounds in the project for that um, I think he got this from somebody else but this WTH or 588D8.H and .cp file are really the only two files you need um, this is the library uh, for that and again I will have this uh, linked for you um, but again really great stuff that's kind of where I'm getting my information from and some of you are visual learners and like videos, so that's why I'm making the video uh, for you. Um, but if you open up the uh, the file or the uh, program to download to the chip, I'm going to kind of take you through that. Um, this is also in the first video. Um, I'm going to go a little bit quicker on this one. So um, you can go to new project, and once you do that, you can then name it. I'm actually not going to start a new project. I'm just going to open one. Um, I'm going to open up this project. And you can right click and load. And this is how you load your sound files. So you can go in and load the different files that you want. Um, the WAV files, just make sure they're formatted correctly. Again, the first video talks about how to do that. Then what I want to do is I want to populate what these hexadecimal numbers, what file they'll play. So when you send a signal to the through the three wires, um, of zero, it will play zero dot wave. When I send a one, it'll play one dot wave. So these are basically aligned to, so it'll say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how you do that is you click on this. So I'm going to delete this out of here. And so I'm clicking on zero six, and I just double click on the file that I want. And if I want a second file, I can double click on it and it puts the second file that it would play. So that's what I've done on number eight, is that it plays the number eight and then it also plays this warning approaching maximum value uh, file right after it. And then it will move on and play nine and then 10. 11 is just set up for uh, it to say ready when it first starts. So when I start my program, say ready so that I know it's ready to go and then we'll start the count and that's it and then again you can do hundreds of sound files that are different and call them individually through these hexadecimal numbers um, go into and you want to change go to options you want to be in three line mode if you're in key mode here and then you compile it doesn't work right but you need to be in three line mode I'm using pulse width modulation. I think if um, my next video, I'm going to do some testing. Um, but I think if you put it in DAC mode, you change your your pin, and then you can run it to an amplifier, which I'm going to do next because I don't think this is loud enough. So I want to have an amplifier circuit that will will boost the sound for me. So that's kind of my next. That'll be video three uh, coming soon. And then this should be busy mode low. So it drops low when it's busy. And then it's using a pull high resistor for the key modes. So I click on OK. I hit compile. It then creates a bin file. And then this is all the same stuff that I did before. So I go into the downloader. I click on connect. It connects. And then I can hit one key download. And it will then erase and reprogram this chip. And it's pretty quick because this isn't very much. It's only using 6% six, 6 of the flash. And say download success. And we're done. So we can close out of this. And 
I'm going to go ahead and open up my program. So again, I, I took this program from his real-time clock and I stripped it all down until it was just a basic program uh, with a with a basic couple functions. So I'm going to kind of scroll page by page, and then you can pause the video if you want to copy the code. Um, I won't actually have a link for this, but it's pretty straightforward once you understand how it works. These are just comments at the top showing what Arduino pins are connected to the sound module, uh, what pin and what they represent. And then we have a push button. It's normally open, so it's giving a one value because it's uh, held high by the internal pull-up resistor. And then um, when you plug in the other side, it goes to ground. Uh, we're calling this library and then the serial library so we can actually have a serial monitor um, in our to look at. Um, and I'll show you where that is in the code. And then the sound number is just going to uh, start at sound zero, it plays sound zero first, and it's going to increment the sound number by one and play that corresponding sound. Uh, that's all my code does. This is uh, setting up um, the the uh, pin numbers on uh, the WT588D and this is then setting up your sound pin and LED pin on the Arduino and here it starts the uh, the communication with the serial monitor we set our sound pin to an input pull-up and the LED pin to output and then we actually put our LED pin low I don't actually use the LED pin, but you can use this for diagnostics. If your code isn't working, you can then digitally write the LED pin to go high or to blink or whatever uh, to see where you're at in your program. This uh, starts the chip. And then, um, again, this is in the setup, so we play the sound weight. Play sound weight is the function that I call, and I'm playing sound 11, which will say ready. Now, if you remember uh, back on here, sound 11 would be 0B plays ready and then it goes into the main loop and it basically just says if the sound pin is pressed so when it's 0 that's the, the key is pressed it plays sound weight sound number um, so sound number currently is 0 so it's going to play sound 0 so we're going to go back up here and set it equal to 0 um, and then it's going to add 1 to the sound number so sound number so we'll say 0 adds one to sound number and then if sound number is greater than 10 it resets it back to 0 so it's going to count from 0 to 10. So let's look at this play sound weight function that I wrote. Pretty simple. It's going to serial print the sound played is and then say what sound is being played and then it uses this function uh, which is in the sound library or the WT588D.H uh, sound library and then you just put in the sound number. Uh, the busy 100 is another function uh, that was uh, that I wrote and what it does is it waits for 100 milliseconds and then while the sound, while the busy port is busy um, it just sits in this while loop um, so it's checking right up here this busy port and if port 4 is busy then it doesn't move on in the code um, and then it delays for another pause and you can put a zero there I put another hundred milliseconds you can actually do it so that it would time how long uh, the sound file was and then so if you wanted to do a counter that was every second um, it takes less time to say one than it does seven probably so you can actually have it so that this delay would be based on the timer on the Arduino chip so some things that you could play with if you wanted to make an actual audio counter that was real time in terms of you know every second that it says one two three four is actually a second long but anyway um, that's the program pretty pretty simple so you can download that sketch so I'm gonna plug it in and I have an FTDI cable that I'm going to plug in. And I'm going to open 
that much, Gerald.